The famous composer John Powell once said, the only real mistake is the one from which we learn nothing. We are products of a past, yet we don't have to be defined by them, and it does not have to shape our future. Welcome back, Commander. In this video, we'll take a look at seven lessons BioWare need to learn in order to make the next Mass Effect game the best it could possibly be. As always, don't forget to check out my other Mass Effect videos on my channel, and if you enjoy the content, consider subscribing. In the Mass Effect trilogy, the morality system is tied to the dialogue responses. You can either go Paragon Blue or Renegade Red. To unlock these morality choices, you either have to pick a nice, friendly response or a darker, more straight-to-the-point negative reply. There is also a neutral option that didn't do anything. The problem with this system is that it forces you to play one way or the other. If you do try to play a Paragade build, you run the risk of being locked out of speed checks, and if you don't have enough points in either Paragon or Renegade, you'll miss out on a special mission in Mass Effect 1. In Mass Effect Andromeda, they did do away with the morality system to give you a little bit more freedom with your conversation, but it didn't feel like you're shaping your rider, again, unless you stick to one conversation type. So there's got to be a good middle ground here. My suggestion is to have every conversation response feed into a speech pop. Two points for Paragon, two points for Renegade, and one point in each of those if you pick the neutral response. That way, if you want to mix up your conversation styles with the neutral option, you'll always be putting points into shaping your character's personality, and you won't feel like you just have to stick to one answer every time. They could also stack in the same way Dragon Age 2's conversations allowed you to build up your attitude towards others. So in between moving the conversation forward, you could have friendly, sarcastic, or angry responses, and then stack to come through in cutscenes. In short, there needs to be more. Part of the brilliance of this franchise is the relationship you build with your crew, but it could come across as a little stilted. Mass Effect 1 and 2, you knew that once you had finished a main mission, you could go around your crew and they'd be in their respective places and have new dialogue. Mass Effect 3 did a better job of moving the crew around the ship, but it needs to be a bit more dynamic. You could even work game decisions into them, such as crew member needs your help with, I don't know, uh, fixing a medical scanner. By doing so, you'll help your team recover quickly, but it takes your attention away from a crew argument than the cargo hold, and uh, results in further negative repercussions later in the game, or something like that. However, not fixing the medical scanner results in you desperately needing it at some point later on. And having instances like this not only means that you'll have a choice and consequence, but you won't be able to be friends with everyone. Your direct actions will have positive and negative outcomes, and you'll have to decide who you help and who you'll disappoint. A failure to plan is planning to fail. Mass Effect Andromeda lacked the planning in the direction it needed. The actual game was only made in 18 months, but it had been in development for five years. Imagine what kind of game it would have been if the full five years had been utilised effectively. It's a testament to the staff that produced such a beautiful looking game. Well, apart from some eyes, in such a short amount of time. The EA overlords at some point will expect the game to be released and to make them some money, so don't squander the time you have and end up rushing to get a game out on time. Have your character likeable. People fell in love with their shepherd, but not so much with their rider, as shown in one of my recent polls, although the scores are pretty close. However, it was pointed out to me that Shepard had three games to become a fan favourite, whereas Ryder only had the one. The most common complaint is that Ryder felt too young and inexperienced to be in such a role, which technically was probably the point, but you have to remember that people play games for escapism. They don't want to be the new recruit who doesn't know what to do. That's probably what they have to do in their real life. They want to be the war hero or the leader. They want to have superpowers or a cool guy or cool girl that everyone loves and wants to be. Unless I'm completely wrong about that and you prefer your playable protagonist to be scared of their own shadow. Let me know down in the comments. Oh, and once you're there, don't forget to give this video a boom on the like button. This ties into the planning lesson. Make sure you have a clear vision for the game. If you've done the galaxy ending machines intent on destroying all life, you're not going to top that. Andromeda tried to recreate the Prothean agent technology left behind angle, but that could be a consequence of the shortened development time. You've built up such a rich galaxy full of lore, interesting characters and species, now it's time to expand on that. We know a war could break out with the Terminus systems. The Attican Traverse is under Citadel protection. If the Terminus systems attack, it's an act of war. Technically, yes. But some of the species in the Terminus might be willing to start a war over this. The last thing the Council wants is to get dragged into a major conflict with the Terminus systems. So let that happen. Which side do you fight on? Maybe it's a good opportunity to bring back the Vatarians. They were built up to be humanity's rivals, and yet were never fully utilised. Maybe now they're looking for revenge for what Shepard's actions during the trilogy. 
Either way, it's your story. Don't be afraid to tell it and don't let the fans dictate how it should end. It goes without saying that The Witcher 3 is the gold standard for side missions and all RPGs should take leaf out of its book. Mix in a few fetch quests or planet scanning if you must, but have the majority of your side quests almost like mini stories that could possibly flow into the main campaign. They'll also serve to expand your galaxy, help build or break relationships, acquire new crew members or technologies, or even lose potential people by betrayal or intimidation, or just plain difference of opinion. Each crew member will have their own loyalty missions just as before, but even the people you meet in the world make them bigger and interesting to fully immerse the player. No matter what Mass Effect game comes out next, people won't like it and they'll compare it to the trilogy and to Shepard. But on the other hand, you'll still have a very large fan base that will like it and will let it stand out for being its own game from the franchise. Games these days hardly ever ship in perfect condition and it'll probably need bug fixes and improvement patches, but please don't let the haters win. Stick with it, make the fixes you need to, give your true fans the DLC it deserves. Andromeda was left to finish its Quarian story in a book, which is a true disservice to its creators and to the real fans of the game. Will Bioware see this list? I'm not so sure, but if they do their research, they might just take notice. So if you can think of any other lessons they need to learn from, pop it down in the comments. And to see my wish list for the next Mass Effect game, click on the video that's on screen now. And a thank you to all my supporters, including Nerdy Dude, and I'll see you next time. Commander. <laughs>